The February deep freeze hit hard in the Texas Hill Country. The Guadalupe River froze. The birds looked like they felt like they were freezing. I felt pretty sorry for those miserable looking birds out there. I hadn't seen big flocks of robins on the ground and in the trees. But then I learned that robins eat the juniper berries, and that's why we had big flocks of robins very visible throughout the deep freeze. My flowering quince, that wonderful bush that blooms first, sometimes in mid-January, was being busily visited by my bees as they stocked up and headed back to the hive with pollen and nectar. A day later, my flowering quince was covered in ice. And when the thaw came, so came the death of those beautiful pink flowers. But if you look closely, you can see that the bees still came back and they must have been getting some pollen from those poor, withered, dead quince flowers. Oh, but it would be evil to complain because we we're among the lucky ones who have a fireplace and lots of wood so that we could cook our supper when the power went out. But enough of this drivel. Let's go outside and check in on the aviary. Mm. The big freeze is at an end, thank the Lord. And I thought I'd take you on a quick tour around my bee yard here in Kerr County. This particular hive is an eight frame and that bottom box is the one that has the bees. The top box is an enclosure for a Klaus hive dome. Same setup in this hive, except this is a 10 frame. And it has some Apame equipment. The top cover is Apame. The top cover here is just a, an insulated top cover that I've decided I'm going to put on all the hives. It seems to work pretty well to maintain the temperature in the hive a bit better. Back to this Apame, the bottom board is a screened bottom board and it comes with this landing board attached and these entrance reducers, the blue sliders, are slid almost as far in as they'll go to keep the entrances reduced at this point, keep the warm air in for the bees. The bottom board on the Rainbow Hive is a, just a standard screened bottom board. The blue swirl has a different arrangement with the bottom board. It's also a screened bottom board, but it's another plastic one. The three tabs that you see at the bottom of that slatted bottom board, which is the red part, those three plastic slats help you reduce and enlarge the size of the entrances. This is not a screened bottom board on this 10 frame, hive, hive, we call it. Although there's no activity right now, this morning when I brushed off the snow, I could hear life inside the hive, and I see that they have brought out some dead, many more dead bees around this hive. It is a beautiful Saturday, 24 hours later, February 20th. The sun is shining, the bees are flying. It looks like these bees at the blue swirl are even doing orientation flights, which stands to reason. They were cooped up inside that box for a week. They need to reorient themselves. But the sky is a glorious shade of blue, and I am almost giddy that we are no longer having to stay inside and eat from the fireplace. Something interesting is going on here at this Apigard Hive the one that has the balloons on front, I've noticed that it has fewer dead bees all around it on the ground than any of the other hives. And I thought that might be because this equipment is better at protecting the bees from the cold weather. But then I noticed something else going on that might explain why there are fewer bee carcasses everywhere. Watch what is going on toward the far end of this particular hive, one that has the big landing board. There she comes. Out comes one of the morticians, 
She's getting herself grounded. She's grabbing one of her sisters. I assume this is a dead sister and not one that's met with the queen's disfavor. Watch as she hooks back. There she goes to the left and, to, and then far, far out away from the apiary. Now, if you ask me, that is a hygienic bee. And I'm wondering if they're taking all of their dead sisters away to some kind of cemetery for a memorial garden, that sort of thing, for their dead sisters. You know that I'm kidding, but I still am just a little bit too exuberant because the sun is shining at last. Now we're going to take a quick trip from Kirk County to Kendall County, and I'll show you what happened with our bees in that part of the Texas Hill Country. What a beautiful sight. Bees, bees, bees. We just made it out to our second apiary today, and my goodness, these girls are busy. And of course, there's been a lot of death as well from the super cold weather, but it looks like they made it through very strong. So today we're here, <laughs> we're here to um, add some space for these strong hives. And so, by the grace of God, all of our hives have survived the Texas deep freeze. Let's go back to Friday afternoon, the beginning of the thaw, and I will walk you through step by step what we did to prepare our hives to make it through the super cold weather. We'll begin over here with the hives that have attics. The Klaus Dome hives don't need an attic, but we put these shims on the tops of all of our hives that uh, don't have the dome inside. And the shims allow us to feed our bees in a way that only the bees who live in the hives can access the food. We use these corks to provide ventilation. We take the corks out all summer long. And in the wintertime, we use sometimes more, sometimes fewer corks to allow the ventilation to pass on through these hives. And this time, this for before this storm, I got my paper shredder, which was almost full of paper, and wadded up the shredded paper and stuck it in the attics as well. And I hope that it would add some insulation and also that it would catch any condensation that might otherwise fall down on the bees. We like to use these insulated hive tops, the Be Smart tops. This is a standard telescoping top, and here we have the Be Smart insulated hive top. We have to put bricks or straps on to keep those from blowing away in the wind. Something as mundane as entrance reducers can make a difference. You probably noticed those unorthodox entrance reducers on some of these hives. And the way these are these work, those little plastic strips allow the bees to come in and out. And if the arches are up, that strip is closed. The bees can't get in or out, but there is some ventilation. If the arches are down, as you can see, barely, there is some space for the bees to come and go. So I just closed off the majority of those areas to keep the drafts down on the bees. All right, keep the drafts away from the bees might be more accurate. Then on this other hive that has the Klaus Dome, I've kept this entrance small throughout the winter. It's not a very strong hive, although you can see that it looks pretty robust right now. And as the weather gets warmer, I will give it a much larger entrance so the bees can come and go more freely. This gives us a long list of things to do to prepare for a snowstorm in the Texas Hill Country. I'm going to write it down and post that list. But I also want to mention two things not to do. One thing is, as tempting as it is, don't go trudging through that beautiful snow 
and go pounding or even tapping on your bee boxes because that will disturb their cluster and the bees at the outside of the cluster won't be able to fly. They may fall down into the bottom of the hive and freeze to death. So leave them alone. You just have to be patient and wait until you know that the weather's going to get warm and you can see them flying around. The second thing not to do is something that I did with our hives in Kendall County. We had the Varroa boards, we left them in for the winter and I still believe that that worked very well, but one of the Varroa boards was too long. So in order to put the strap on the hive to keep out the raccoons, I just bent the Varroa board up and put the strap on it like that. Well, when we went back and opened the hives day before yesterday, we found moisture inside just that one hive that had the bent up Varroa board. The bees were okay. We had an inner cover and we also had uh, some granulated sugar in there and a round feeder and I think that caught most of the moisture. It didn't get down on the bees. But in the future, I'll make sure that I trim all the Varroa boards so that they fit the hives better.